Hello everyone and welcome, Metrobank PLC has had a tumultuous few years leading up to 2021, and the discount on its share price reflects this. Could they now be on the brink of a turning point, or is it doomed to failure? In this video we take a closer look. Let's get started. At the Personal Finance Institute, our mission is to bring financial literacy to you, so that you can plan your financial future. If you are finding our content useful, informative, and you'd like to see more, please do like, share, and subscribe. Metrobank PLC is a UK-based retail and commercial bank founded in 2010, and at the time of launch was the first new high street bank to do so in over 150 years. Metrobank has operated under a traditional branch-based model, and attempts to differentiate itself from its competitors by providing the highest quality customer service. One example in which it has tried to do this is by offering much longer opening hours, seven days a week, to its customers. For all its failings over the last few years, Metrobank has consistently been highly rated in terms of customer satisfaction, especially compared to the major high street banks such as Lloyd's, Barclays, and NatWest, as is shown for example in this survey from August 2020. Over the past few years, Metrobank has continued to expand its branch network at a time when its competitors have been closing branches, and shifting towards a digitally focused business model. In the period between 2015 and 2019, over 3,300 bank branches were closed across the K across the industry, roughly one-third of all branches. Meanwhile, Metrobank has increased its branches from 40, in 2015, to 77, at the end of 2020. In recent years, the Bank of England base rate has remained very low, which makes it harder for banks to earn revenue from interest. With this backdrop, the bank has sacrificed profitability for revenue growth by pursuing further branch expansion, as bank branches are expensive to run and maintain, especially when you're operating them for extended hours. This, coupled with an accounting error whereby the bank had misclassified a portion of its loans, ultimately resulted in investors losing confidence in the management team and business model, which resulted in the spectacular collapse in share price of over 95%, falling from over £40 per share to below £2 in mid-2019. In late 2019, the majority of the founding management team, including Chairman, Vernon Hill, and CEO, Craig Donaldson, stepped down, paving the way for new leadership. Since then, the goal for management has been a turnaround of the business, and unfortunately the COVID-19 pandemic came at a very poor time for Metro Bank, which resulted in the share price falling to an all-time low of around 60p in mid-2020. It has recovered somewhat since then, recovering to around 120p at the end of 2020, following hopes of economic recovery, as a result of COVID-19 vaccine announcements. The share price currently reflects an 85% discount on the net book value of the bank, and the question for potential investors, which we will assess further in this video, is whether or not the potential for recovery is good enough to justify the share price. Before assessing Metro Bank's potential, we're going to quickly explain how it makes its money as a bank, and what the key factors are when assessing performance and risk. As a retail and commercial bank, Metro Bank is a bank in the traditional sense, earning returns by borrowing money from customer deposits, and then lending money, at a higher interest rate, to borrowers for their needs whether it is personal, or business related. The difference between these two things is called net interest income, with net interest margin, or NIM, describing the percentage earned. This can be thought of as gross profit before operating costs are deducted. The two key costs incurred by the bank are administrative costs, such as staff salaries and expenses related to running branches, etc., and credit losses, where customers fail to repay their loans, resulting in losses for the bank. Expected credit losses are recognized on all of the loans held by the bank on a forward-looking basis, and therefore during times of economic downturn, such as that which has resulted from COVID-19, greater expected credit losses are recognized, in anticipation of customers defaulting on their loans. 
these basic elements determine how profitable the bank can be, however this needs to be viewed in tandem with the stability of the bank. Banks work using what is called a fractional reserve model, whereby the bank only holds a fraction of the loans and deposits it holds in reserves, or capital. The smaller the fraction, the larger the risk for the equity holders. How small the fraction is is referred to as leverage in this context, with the trade-off being between greater leverage, and therefore risk, and reward. Since the great financial crisis of 2008, the PRA and FCA, who regulate UK banks, keep a very close eye on the level of capital, or reserve, which banks hold in order to make sure they are resilient to challenging economic conditions, with minimum requirements put in place. The result of this is that banks have become somewhat less risky over the years, however they have also become less profitable. In addition to capital, the regulators also impose liquidity requirements for banks, with the goal of ensuring they have sufficient cash to withstand a period of liquidity stress. The final thing to mention is the loans to deposits ratio. This refers to the level of loans held compared to the level of deposits held. Here again, there is a trade-off between risk and profitability, as higher customer deposits mean higher interest paid to customers, but it also means there is a greater buffer in case a run on the bank occurs, where a large number of deposits holders withdraw cash suddenly. Okay, so what about Metro Bank in particular? As previously noted, the bank has pursued a high-cost branch strategy which, when combined with a low interest rate environment, has led to a serious lack of profitability. The bank was already loss-making in 2019, and matters were made worse with COVID-19 resulting in reported additional expected credit losses of £126.7 million in the year ended 31 December 2020. To date, costs for the bank have continued to soar with significant upfront costs being occurred to make efficiencies throughout the business, and the ability of the bank to keep these costs under control moving forward will also be key. We would also note that, due to much government support provided to borrowers in the form of government-backed loans and the furlough scheme, the vast majority of expected credit losses recognized relate to defaults which have not yet happened, and largely depending on economic outlook for the UK, the picture may yet get better or worse. Net interest margin has declined significantly over the past few years, primarily due to high competition over interest rates, particularly in the mortgages market, coupled with a declining Bank of England base rate, which fell to 0.1% in March 2020. The bank's strategy is now to pivot its lending mix towards high-yielding areas including specialized mortgages, such as those with lower required deposits, and unsecured consumer lending. Metro Bank has taken steps towards this strategy through a sale of 3 billion of its mortgages to NatWest in 2020, as well as through the acquisition of peer-to-peer -peer lender, rate setter. The bank's ability to execute this new strategy effectively forms a key part of the investment case for Metro. So, it's clear that Metro is not in a good position at this moment in time, and this is why the share price is trading at below 85% of the book value. The bank, however, now has a strategy to return to profitability. The question therefore for potential investors is, how long will it take to return to profitability, and does the bank have enough capital to absorb future losses during transition up to this point? Shown here are analyst forecasts for revenue, in this case, net interest income, and for earnings. The current expectations for Metro Bank is that it won't stop eroding capital until 2024 at the earliest, and is not likely to return to a decent profit a little while after that. Profitability may well be a few years away, however, if Metro Bank does show itself to be on the right course in the next year or so, this will begin to be well reflected in the share price long before that. Regardless, this is a turnaround and recovery investment that will take a lot of time and patience for any prospective investors.
As noted previously, how well Metro is able to absorb further capital hits is going to be a big factor in its ability to recover organically. On this slide we have set out projections for future capital levels by adjusting the level of capital available by forecast profitability in the future. We note that the leverage ratio remains at a healthy 5.62% currently, however this is forecast to fall to at least 4.2%. This is roughly in line with the bank's minimum strategic target leverage of 4%, and provides a small margin above the regulatory buffer of 3%. The current CT1 percentage of 15% is also healthy, however with losses to be expected in the next two years at least, this will be put under strain. Assuming Metro holds similar risk-weighted assets in the future, the CT1 percentage will fall to at least 11.2% as a result of forecast losses. This may be above the current minimum requirement of 9.3%, however, as the bank transitions to higher yield lending, the risk-weighted assets will increase and there is a risk it could come close to breaching requirements. In any case a reducing level of capital will attract scrutiny, and potential investors should therefore be aware of the risk of dilution should further capital be required in a distressed scenario. In Trust is an important thing for all businesses, However it is especially important for banks, where the business depends on the deposits made by customers. In 2019, the previous management team headed by CEO Craig Donaldson and chairman and founder Vernon Hill stepped down, ultimately as a result of the fact that investors, and many commercial depositing customer, had lost confidence and trust in their ability to lead the bank. The management team was then replaced in late 2019, led by new CEO Dan Frumkin, and interim chairman, Sir Michael Snyder, a veteran in the industry, who remains as a non-executive director. The new chairman was named as Robert Sharp, who is also considered to be a veteran in the banking industry. It is worth noting that in terms of director deals, there has only been by orders since the new management changes took effect at the end of 2019, which should provide some indication that management maintain confidence in the business. It should be known to potential investors that, amongst the turmoil suffered by Metro Bank, it has been one of the most heavily shorted stocks on the UK stock exchange, meaning there has been a serious lack of confidence in the company. As shown in the graph on this slide, the short position peaked in mid-2019, and remained high into 2020, however it has begun to fall towards the end of 2020, and into 2021. The reduction in short position may be an indicator that the tide is beginning to turn for Metro, however it still remains high at around 4%. It, the bear case for Metro Bank is quite clear, if management are unable to improve the profitability of the bank then further capital deterioration will continue and more pain can be expected for investors. There are a lot of key risks for Metro to overcome, and any potential investors should understand that there is every chance the turnaround plan won't succeed. The recovery for Metro is also highly contingent on the health of the UK economy, and any investor's personal view of the UK economy outlook will play a big role in the investment case for Metro. Having said that, we can see a possible route to recovery for Metro, with analyst forecasts expecting a profit of circa £87 million by 2025. Looking at metrics across other UK banks, we have calculated some possible estimates for share price, if the turnaround is successful, and a profit is achieved of £87 million in 2025. We note that we have used metrics from the largest UK banks, we'd note that since they are larger and more established, we might expect a discount on the Metro Bank metrics to account for higher risk, even in 2025. However, being a smaller bank, Metro may have better growth prospects which might result in a higher share price. Overall, we're satisfied that these banks provide a reasonable illustrative benchmark. Using these metrics we have calculated that the Metro Bank share price could range from £3.42 to over £11 by 2025, 
if the turnaround plan is successful. We have also calculated that this would translate to an internal rate of return of between 25% and 60% on the current share price of £1.10. Whether this level of return is sufficient to justify the high risks involved is the key judgment for any potential investors. Overall, we can see that Metro Bank is facing an uphill battle, with just a glimmer of hope for a turnaround. The bank has made encouraging progress towards its new higher yield strategy following the acquisition of Ratesetter, and with the sale of £3 billion of low yielding mortgages, at a small premium, to NatWest in 2020. Under current analyst forecasts the bank would have sufficient capital to absorb expected losses in the medium term, however reducing CT1 levels will attract close scrutiny from investors and the regulator. Metro Bank has continued to deliver a good customer service, and hopefully this will continue going forward. If, and it is a big if, Metro Bank can return to profits in 2025, this would represent a substantial return for investors entering at the current share price of £1.10, which represents an 85% discount to book value. On the other hand, with Brexit and COVID-19, there remains significant uncertainty around the UK economy, and the level of credit losses suffered by Metro Bank are liable to increase depending on this. In turn, further capital erosion is capable of derailing the turnaround plan entirely. In any case, it's a long-term turnaround play, investors should not expect to receive a return for a number of years. So, what do you think about Metro Bank PLC? Is it cheap enough, or does it have further to fall? Tell us in the comments below. That's all for today everyone. This video was brought to you by the Personal Finance Institute, please do remember to like, share, and subscribe, and please do post any questions you have below and we'll be happy to answer them.